Hello, I'm State Senator Marilyn Chase from the 32nd Legislative District. This week I'd like to talk to you about a topic that concerns me greatly. We often hear in Olympia the, fr the phrase, never waste a good crisis, meaning that the financial crisis we are in can be used by advocates for one cause or another to achieve their goals that would be impossible during times of financial stability. Our safety net is a carefully constructed interconnected system to provide care and it is under attack. Our state operates five residential community cottages and nursing home centers for profoundly disabled people. Shoreline, Hasfer Crest, Rainier, Francis Haddon Morgan, Lakeland, and Yakima Valley School. Some advocates are working to close these facilities. The centers are places of safety, providing the highest level, most cost-effective care available in our state for the most profoundly disabled among us. The federal government in law and the federal courts in legal decisions guarantee disabled people their choice in where they want to live, and state law further confirms this choice. But DSHS has a diversionary committee called the Admissions Review Team. The track record of this committee is to divert people from choosing to live in one of the centers in spite of their right to do so. For several years, DSHS refused to admit anyone to one of the centers, and the federal government finally told them either open up admissions or pay back the several hundred million dollars the state received with a stipulation that individuals with disabilities and their parents or guardians would have the choice of where people with disabilities would live. For a short time, DSHS opened up the admissions and a number of people were allowed in. But DSHS rapidly closed admissions with their diversionary committee. Because few know of the existence of this committee, especially lawmakers deliberating on the future of the homes of the profoundly disabled, DSHS has simply announced that there is simply not a demand for admission to the RHC, so we should close them. But that is not the truth. And once again, DSHS is risking a federal investigation for refusing to admit the facts. Families want admission, DSHS denies admission. Families have the legal right to make the decision of where their loved ones will live. DSHS has placed ideological advocates in the position of making the decisions and the choices that families are guaranteed the right to make. They are putting the federal matching funds at risk by their discriminatory policies. And in the interest of transparency, we need to know what the facilities cost the taxpayers. The state pays about 28% of the care provided by our, by our centers, while the federal government pays about 65%, and the resident pays about 7% from their own income, primarily SSI. At Fircrest, the state pays $170 per day, Rainier, $119. At Francis Haddon Morgan, about $131. At Lakeland, about $143. And at Yakima Valley School, about $155 per day. The chart on your screen was put together from the 2010 cost detail for federal reimbursement. As you can see, the DSHS estimate of the cost to the general fund is much higher than it actually is. Washington taxpayers actually pay the amount in blue while the federal government pays the rest. We need to cut an additional $5 billion from our state budget, but the plan being proposed will create a more expensive service delivery system. It also shifts costs off the state budget and onto local budget, budgets such as fire, police, hospital emergency rooms, jails, as well as families and individuals. The proposed model provides less oversight and may also result in more cases of abuse and fewer options to combat it, as was well documented in the Seattle Times and by Disability Rights Washington. Such high levels of acuity, remember, and that is the level of disability, require stability, routine, and safety. We recently saw the devastating res results of the privatization policy when DSHS tried to close Fircrest and forcibly remove people from their homes. 
That decision cost six lives and, a, and cost the state a six-figure lawsuit. And ultimately, people moved back to Fir Crest. The dismantling of the social safety net reminds me of the struggle we had a few years ago to defend public schools against charter schools. The dismantling of the social safety net may be another call for democracy in action. That's all for this week. Let me know what you think. And as always, please contact me personally with any comments, questions, or concerns. My information is at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for watching.